army still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me Your promise still stands your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. Still in your hands This is my confidence You never failed me yet You never failed me yet You never failed me yet You never failed me person that if I was walking down the street and I seen a group of people and I thought I had to walk through that group of people, I would cross the street and go on the other side. That's how little confidence I had. That's how insecure I was. And so often today we deal with, you know, insecurities and that, but I've only grown confident in knowing who Christ is. That's where my confidence comes from. It comes from God. And so we're singing this song, which is like one of my new favorite songs. And every time I sing that about the confidence that we have in Christ and his faithfulness. So whatever you're going through this morning, whether you're in this building and it's so wonderful to see people and to worship with people this morning, or whether you're still sitting at home Whatever you need from God today, maybe you're feeling insecure, maybe you're lonely, maybe you feel that you're just like been pushed down, stomped on, whatever that is, I want you to know today that you can receive confidence from God because of what? Not because of who we are, because we change. I've changed so much even in the last week that sometimes I'm unrecognizable even to myself. But God never changes. His mercies are new every morning. And the Bible says, great is his faithfulness. And so this morning, I just want to encourage you to whatever it is you're walking through today, whatever it is you have going on, find your confidence in Christ. And I just want to pray with you this morning before uh, we do whatever we're going to do next. And, and just pray that you receive that today. This morning when we were worshiping and singing, we, we felt the victory in this room and that victory can be yours today. Not because, not because of what we do. Thank God. Like I could do nothing in my own strength, but it's because of what he's already done for us. And so Father, I just want to thank you. And this morning I encourage people that couldn't even step forward to the front. I encourage you to just make one little step in whatever direction, it doesn't matter. Because then God comes to, to the rest of the way. He will run to them. You will run to them, God. And so I just thank you, Father, that we can just leave everything with you. We can leave our shame with you. We can leave our hurts with you. We can leave our weaknesses with you. And we can rise up with our head held high knowing that we are a child of the King of Kings, 
and the Lord of Lords. And so, Father, I pray for every person in this building and watching today that they would receive what you want to give them today. And that's the truth of knowing who you are and your faithfulness. And let's lean on that this morning. Amen. God bless you. as I love the church and would promote this building as the church, I would probably say that all computers and technologies from the devil. <laughs> Just my personal opinion. And, um, but we're glad you made it on this side. And um, it got a little complicated here for a little bit, Steve. You did well, you kept you calm. So uh, we're at Revelation chapter 8, and um, we're going to let the kids go downstairs, I think, aren't we, Mel? You want to take them down? It won't be long. We're going to do communion. So maybe somebody could go, come and get you for communion, and we could do communion with us. And so um, John just had an image um, played out when it came to the incense and the offering uh, on the Day of Atonement. John seen it take place in heaven where the, the actual, when the incense was maybe coming up into the nostrils of God. Uh, not many priests had that privilege when, on the Days of Atonement. They would offer the incense knowing that it would, but John sort of got the picture from heaven's side of what really was taking place and which was so cool. And uh, last week I came to the conclusion that that angel that was holding the golden bowl at the golden altar possibly could have been Jesus simply because the only one that ever could offer incense to the Lord had to be the person that also was the priest that was, uh, that was actually offering atonement for the people that day. And so it was pretty good. Now, now we're dealing with trumpets, and uh, which is uh, pretty amazing. I think of some of the uh, trumpets that would sound well. You, if you want to know that in Jubilee year in the Old Testament, on the Day of Atonement, there were all kinds of trumpets that were being sound uh, for uh, the people. There, there was trumpets sounded when it came to the destruction of Jerusalem. But also there was trumpet sound in the restoration of God's people as they were liberated out of cat at captivity. And there was some trumpet sound. Uh, also the, probably the image that would have been in John's mind when he looks at these seven trumpets could have been the day that the actual original day that Israel went around Jerusalem that seventh day and they walked around the city in the promised land and the walls came tumbling. We sang a song this morning about the walls coming down. Well, they seen that. Um, I have been not wanting to leave the throne of God with this series and I can report now I still don't have to leave his throne room simply because the upcoming events that we're about to look at 
still shows God's kindness. And, and you're going to say when I start uh, listing off these trumpets, come on, Roger, you, you don't see God's mercy in this. And I hope I can convince you of God's mercy even as we look at four trumpets uh, today. And so um, I, I think it's uh, what is happening is, is really mind-boggling, but still the reality is is that uh, God still sits on the throne. Denise, I'm going to need some water. <coughs> I, got, I raise my... I, I, sometimes I, uh, I, I peek out my voice in such a way that I, I just... I, I don't know what I do, but anyway, don't worry about it. Who, who knows what can happen with, with my voice. That's why I don't do much singing. <laughs> so let me send it the first trumpet sounds. Can I just say for the Christians that's in the room... For the Christians that will go through the tribulation, if you're watching today and you find yourself during the tribulation and you do not take the mark of the beast and your blood is your 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 testimony is sealed with your own blood, you die and probably beheaded because of your faith in Jesus and you get to inherit the kingdom of God. Not because you receive them now. I would recommend that you receive them now. But during the tribulation, let me just say that the wrath of God was placed on Jesus when he was on the cross. That, that all the wrath that would be poured out, right, the reality is it was placed on Jesus Christ. And God loves us and it is his kindness that leads us to him. And even when we deal with things like we're going to deal with in a few moments, we still want to push forward the mercy and the love of the Lord. First trumpet. Steve, you just display the verses and I'll go with the, uh, I'll try to explain them a little bit. First trumpet sounds, verse 6, one third of the trees and the grass are burnt by hail, fire, mixed with blood. Like uh, John seen the mixture of ale and fire mixed with blood, which was hurtling down on the earth, which was a result of one third of trees and green grass being burnt up. What it is, is this, there was, a, there was an action that took place from the throne of God. So when one of the angels that were given the trumpet. The first trumpet to blow. All of a sudden the action was against the earth. And the life support system when it comes to tree and grass. Now this is, this is post seals. What I would say that uh, even if it's. I'm a pre-tribulationist, believe that the church will be uh, raptured or gathered from the earth before the great tribulation, but I can be proven wrong, so I'm not egotistic enough or biblically literally enough uh, to be right about everything if we do go through halfway. I want to say that this is after the halfway mark of the great tribulation. It's after the Antichrist sealing a peace treaty with many nations. And so we're halfway through and God's wrath is being poured out. Now if we are still here, if I'm wrong about pre and I'm wrong about mid and we our post which drives me insane to think but the reality is that we with God is able to get through anything I would say that for sure just in case you don't understand me this teeny weeny small minimum minor plague that we're dealing with right now is nothing just for your info let me make you matter. This teeny weeny minor minimum plague that we're dealing with right now is nothing to what's coming on the planet. Let me continue. Have I made you mad? Good. Anybody online mad? Good. Good. I don't know how this happens. This could be meters coming from... It could be like volcano activity. Uh, I, I've been hearing a word. I've been hearing a word unprecedented. I don't. Anybody else hear that word lately? <laughs> this could be an unprecedented judgment. It could be from God. Who, who knows? 
What I do know is dropping ale in the midst of lightning that will affect a bloodbath on earth in the sense that one third of the trees and the grass is burnt up, that's purely huge. And you might be thinking, Raj, I don't know where you see the mercy and love of God in this. I'll show you that in a little while. Steve, uh, there's a natural occurrence going to take upon the planet after uh, the Great Tribulation starts. That's God's judgment poured upon the wicked. If I was the wicked, if I did not know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, I'd like up in now. Just saying, my opinion. Second trumpet, Steve, uh, verses uh, 8 and 9. What happens here is um, the marine life. One third of the marine life and ships are destroyed by burning objects that are falling into the water. And, and it's crazy. And one third of the sea turns to blood with this, when this trumpet is sound, the second trumpet. A third of the creatures in the sea die. You say, Raj, I don't see the mercy of God. I'll get to that, right? A third of the world's like transportation in the sense of ships and that are destroyed. Once again, I don't know what does this, if this is monster uh, uh, volcano that erupts under the sea or, or, or what it looks like or an unprecedented thing that happens, but the image is real. Those that are rebelling against God is affected by God's judgment and yet they're not completely destroyed need to see that. Let me give you the third trumpet, Steve, verses 10 and 11. You just displayed them. One third of the fresh waters are poisoned. Killing many people. Matter of fact, killing one third of the population. When the third angel sounds his trumpet, a great star comes blazing like a torch. And the impact of this star is that there is an effect on rivers and springs. And they, the water is turned bitter. And anybody that drinks this water dies. You say, Raj, I don't see the mercy and the kindness of God in this. Let's keep going. Fourth, one third of the sun moon and stars are darkened the fourth angel now sounds his trumpet and the sun is struck in the sense of dimming it to a one third right and which is so crazy and a third of the stars go dark and a third of the moon also turns dark and I think the result of this in a common sense is that the entire light system that's on the planet is darkened which is crazy like what is so crazy in the fourth trumpet when it sounds, there's this eagle that flies across. I haven't heard many eagles talking, so this possibly could be a type of some form of, of supernatural being that God uses in the sense of an angel. And I'm totally not convinced that angels have got wings, but we've got some wings drawn on them. But the reality is whatever this creature is it sounds three woes because number five number six and number seven is going to be disastrous to the planet so what then is God doing here we should ask that question I think it's important for us to ask I mean this scene scene three that we see here right now I mean one could conclude there's this fearful damage that's done on the land. It, it really is. I mean, come on. I mean, not only the land, but all vegetation. Not only the sea, but some of the transportation, like ships. Not only the bitter, the, the, the fresh water, but men will drink it and die. Not only the sun, but the moon and the stars are darkened. The environment, the transportation, the resources that we would use, and now even vision is thrown up. Like what is God doing? I want to say this. All the 
the damage that you've just seen is partial. It's not like total. And where Roger March sees the mercy of God is that he didn't destroy everyone. Because he's just. Like to me, any time that there is a partial judgment, not total, it's not for disaster, it's for warning. So again, midway through the great tribulation, our God is warning the wickedness of humanity upon our planet that listen, you need to come to your senses. That's our God. That's the mercy and the kindness of God. You might take this light. Push it off. Like even if you want, you can not only publicly say that I'm crazy, you can tell me to my face. But I believe, Bob, that God cares for humanity so much that he will send these plagues let me go back again. And hopefully, Bob, you're not the one, anybody that I make mad. Or maybe I don't want to make anybody mad. But this teeny weeny small plague that we're dealing with now is just but just some one little minor thing. And I just want to say to all the Christians in the room and all the Christians that will join online and anybody that's crazy enough to watch me on video, plagues are coming. Oh, I, nobody said amen. Okay, good. No, because I, I don't think we get it. I don't think we understand. I don't think we understand sin. I don't think we understand sin against God. I don't think we understand that Jesus came, that God gave His Son, that whosoever may come and accept Him as their Savior. I don't think we get it from God's side. We just like the planet. But let me tell you that if you're a tree hugger, God's going to burn one third of them. If you like how much you look, like your grass looks after you mow it, God's going to burn some of it up. Because God wants to get humanity's attention. And let me say this to you this morning too. God is all in to keeping the planet green. God told us to subdue it. God told us to look after it. God told us that we would have dominion over everything that was created. We're the ones that messed it up. Better word, right, Denise? Messed it up. Better word. Better word. But guys, two-thirds are still standing. Steve, I don't know, because you, you had the chance to be with me in the first service. I don't know if you threw up the verse that I quoted out of, uh, out of uh, Revelations 9 and verse 20. Like, what happens, guys, is they reject this too. So you know. They reject this. So even the, the, the two-thirds that's left still rejects God. Secularization and sin is so rapid in our world that it will continually get worse it might be okay for me to say that nobody's going to rise to power that's going to fix this only God can do anything with the depravity of man to try to cleanse them and clean them like it's 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 difficult to even police. And what is so crazy is there will be an attempt to police it, but in the future we will move into lawlessness. And you might be seeing that if you're watching the news. Somebody asked me the other day what I thought of conspiracy theories. And I said, uh, there's two things that I don't give no heed to right now. 
Number one is conspiracy theories. Number two is news broadcast. Sorry, I said that live too. They're so opinionated. Denise gave me a look. They're so opinionated. It is so crazy, guys. Guys, if there was ever a day, oh, I, I, I've been thinking, I said to Denise uh, just a day ago, I, I, I still treat myself as a young man. And, and uh, I said to Denise, I, I, even when I'm preaching, I sometimes want to say, if you could listen to this young preacher. And I'm, like, I'm, I, I don't think I'm young anymore. Like it's just, just things happening in my body. Kevin, that, like, like it's just, I, I'm not, uh, there's no young, in, there's nothing young in me. I got a young looking wife. That's it. <laughs> but guys, so if you could believe this medium old preacher. <laughs> older. Older. story. When I say to you that one third of the grass and the trees are destroyed. When I say to you one third of the sea will turn to blood and one third of the ships will be destroyed. When I say to you that one third of the fresh water will be bitter and, 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 and one third of humanity will die be the coronavirus, I don't, I, I wish it wouldn't have took anybody, honestly. But I, I, I want you to know there was one time in scripture that I think there was 70,000 people were killed just because they were counting. Like we took attendance this morning, but don't dare count. <laughs> no, no, but you gotta, like, uh, we're, we're not dealing, we're not dealing with a God that's dead. Like, like this is not like Buddha. Right? Like, this is the God that's just, pure, holy, unapproachable, without the covering of the blood of Jesus. This is a God that's totally connected with the planet, humanity. Like, like, guys, as you can see, everything we created, we're having a bit of struggle with it. But God's creation, even if it dies, it will come back to life in its due season. Like, our God is in control. So I said the offer was not accepted. But guys, I want you to walk out of this room Knowing this, that God, and I want everybody that would watch this video, if you're not a Christian, I want you to track with me now. God has done all that he can do to bring us in. That's who God is. And the reason that two-thirds are still standing is because of the mercy of God. You know, you guys can come on back up. I'll finish up. We're going we're gonna to have communion. And uh, let, me, uh, let me tell you what the church, can I tell you what the church should look like right now? You want that? Like, because of what's going to happen, guys, just so you know, like, I, I think there's, there's possibly some, some unprecedented disasters coming on the planet. And I think the church, not only is it scattered, but it's complacent in our culture. Steve, I'm going to sing a song. Can you, you mind if I sing one? Okay, doodle. Okay, so only when Jesus tells me to sing do I sing. I'm going to move my table so I can clear my voice. Sing. You might want to sing with me. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, 
I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Amen Don't let Satan blow it out I'm gonna let it shine Don't let Satan blow it out I'm gonna let it shine Don't let Satan blow it out I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Let it shine I just realized that I did that like on camera <laughs> so guys, what, what are you saying, Raj? Because I know, guys, I've, when I say teeny weeny plague, I mean teeny weeny plague. Because I know what's coming. And that we, we can't not, church, let this crush us. We got to, guys, like, like, okay, so if you need a sister to help you, you've got to find a sister. Listen, if I was to give you a proper view of the church right now, you, 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 you should, like, push your shoulders back. You should just raise up your chin. And you should be seen getting through with confidence because Jesus will bring us through anything. Let's not reflect our Savior as not capable of maintaining and helping us get through anything just because we're living in defeat. You say, Roger, you don't understand. I do understand that we lean way too much on our flesh. And not enough on the spirit. And I'm not here to criticize, put down, or tear apart. This is what I know. This is what I know. If I could find the mercy and the kindness of God, Jock, halfway through the great tribulation, that God did not destroy everyone, but still gave it as a warning, then I should be able to tell the church that, that God constantly went after Israel to remarry them and to bring them back into the fold. And because he put his wrath on Jesus and our sin Jesus paid for, then God is going to do everything that he can to bring you to the finish line. You are not alone. Amen. You're not. We serve a God that's with us and for us and going to help us to the end. If you are down, defeated, discouraged, or depressed, our God have faced all of them things before and have helped many men and women of God get through them. Take hope. The book of Revelation is not about wrath. It's about hope. And that's the God we serve. So let's, Denise, can, okay. Yeah, um, we're going to do communion. So you're going to have to get your own communion. Because it's like we're live and we don't want to get in trouble. If you are live and you want some communion, just go get something. Just go, like you can break bread with us. We, let's stay online. This is one of the things that we're supposed to do and remember. So we're going to stay with you. And we couldn't get this stuff to you, but you just need a small piece of bread. And you just need some grape juice, fruit of the vine. If you don't have it, like, just use something that you've got to, to track with us this morning. And, um, Steve, why don't you start a song, and then that'll get me back into a different mode. Would you do that?
You trying to get yours open? Yeah. 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 You might need Julie. Just, just, Steve, Steve, yeah, you, Steve, if you can't get it open, just eat the entire thing. <laughs> send anybody to heaven or I can't send anybody to hell. That's God's idea and God's plan and God, God will look after that. But what I do know is that he gave his son and the night that Jesus was betrayed he took bread and it says he broke it and he said take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Let's take it together. We've been really changing the language of church. Apparently, they don't want us to use uh, some of the language anymore. So let me be careful. Okay, so this represents the, oh, my mic. Uh, uh, Steve, it's just, uh, I think my head is square. Steve, that's the problem. <laughs> oh, I spilled my great, where's Mark? Oh, no, Mark. Uh, so let me get stay close. So they tell us that we shouldn't use the some language. So let me just be careful and say that this represents the blood of Jesus Christ. 
And if the blood of Jesus Christ have not poured into your life and covered, you're lost. There's no other way in but the blood. And this cup represents his blood. And without the blood, there's no remission of sins. Let's take it together. So we're going to finish this service, and um, and uh, we just want to thank everybody for coming and joining us online. And um, I don't know if you want to sing one more part of that song, or you, you're good, or we're good. So Father, we thank you for today. We ask you to be with us, go with us, and God, I pray that that everybody understood about the mercies of God today. God, you are a merciful God toward not only the world. But the church, thank you for your mercy. In Christ's name, amen.